creating a form. When we create a form, we think about its function. Part of the function is how we'll lay it out and the ways we want our users to enter or give us the information, the answers to the questions we're asking them. We have many controls that we can utilize to set this up. We also want to make sure that we properly contain the regions and labels, make it very clear to the end user how the data should be entered into the form. The controls group. The controls group allows you to take a look and add different types of controls. We also have a design mode that we can kick into, or we can be in the preview mode in essence, so that we can see what the form would look like when we're filling it out. We have the ability to put in things like labels and text and graphics, lovely combo drop-down boxes. These are great to give a predetermined set of choices. We also have the ability to allow people to agree to yes, no, sort of Boolean field check boxes. And of course, date picker. This is very nice because if I have a date field, I want people to choose from a calendar and not rely on them typing it in. Because if they type it in, they might do it, say, you know, year, month, day. And I don't like that format. I want it in a very specific format. So instead of having them type it, it's best to have them choose it. So many controls to choose from and more to choose from as well if you didn't find what you needed in the basic controls group. Adding text content controls. So I have labels, but I don't have any place to put the answers to these questions of who, what, or when. So we're going to go up and I need a special tab called developer. Now if you already have the developer tab active, great. You don't need to do this step. If you don't, as I don't, you have to go to the File, Options, and we have to customize the ribbon, and we have to locate the developer in the main tabs area. Just activate the check mark so that we see the developer tab. Click OK, and now we should have at the end of the list a developer tab. Now you might have already had your developer tab up, that's great. If so, you were ahead of us and you were ready to go in and put some controls. Now the types of controls we have, we have a rich text control, we have the ability to put in a plain text control, so just a simple little line of text, no formatting. We have the ability to put in graphics, we have the ability as well to put in some special building blocks. We have the ability to put in some things called combo boxes, which gives us a list of choices. We have a list which also lets us do choices. And we have the ability to do a date picker. This is great because it pops up a calendar. And if that's not enough controls for me, there are many other controls we can add as well. So you have a lot of controls that you can add in, your call, your choice. I'm going to go ahead myself and put in a basic text item here. So nothing special, nothing fancy. I don't need any sort of formatting. If I want formatting, I choose a rich text content control. And there it is, there is options so that I can control what that's going to be like. Now if I want to make further options about it, every single field you have selected, you have the ability to go in and control its properties. You should give it a proper title. And you also have the ability to tag them. This is useful for some other criteria later on down the road that you might use with your form. You have the ability, because it has formats, to apply a style to any contents that are within it. So use any style that you'd like. Um, let's say I want it to look like a emphasis. Okay, you use your style. And you can also lock it down so that it can't be deleted. This is some good protection information. So I'm happy with that, I click OK. So now it has a nice little label above it so that when I'm working with it, I know its purpose, its goal, its name. Now I also need to put one in below that for the training. And the training that they desire, they can put any sort of training they want, but that might be a bit of a wild card. So if you ever put a field in and change your mind, you simply select it and hit delete. It might be best to put in instead something with some choices. Okay, so if we want to add in some choices, we can always go ahead and do that as well. But for now, we're happy with our simple name and text field, 
and you've on well on your way to creating a brand new form that has never been created before. Adding a drop-down list. When you have a form and you want choices instead of a standard text, which could be kind of a wild card here, because I might not want them to just put any sort of training thereafter, you can go ahead and place in a very special kind of feature. We have a couple of options that will allow you to create choices. We are going to use a drop-down list, and a drop-down list has properties like all field elements, and we can give it a title. And then we have the ability to give choices. What are we wanting to choose from? We want them to either tell us they want a conference or a class. Okay, so a conference or a class, what do they want to go to? So we go ahead and click Add. Display name will be conference. Now the value could be the same. If you are wanting it to be identical, that's fine. Be aware, though, that sometimes the value returned might be some sort of ID or classified information. There's, there's different things. So let's say conferences, when it's returned to the source wherever it goes into, it really equals C12. Okay, so C12 is the data that gets entered later on to some other system. So you have choices to leave them the same. The users see conferences value C12 will be entered back in some other system, some other place. So you can choose that. They can be the same. They can be different. We also want to know if they want to see a class. And classes maybe our code C13. Okay, so we make sure that we have it coded properly. However you best need to do that. Click OK. Now you can have as many choices as you'd like. I'm happy with two. That's where I'm going to stop. If you want more choices, however, you simply keep adding them. If you need to go back in and change something, you can modify it. Maybe they've changed their mind about how they want that returned. You simply modify it any given time. Right, no right, no wrong, all things you want to do. Order. If you want to set and specify the order, you can go ahead and move them up or down. Typically, alphabetical is a good option to put those in, although it's not always necessary. You also can set it so that they cannot edit the contents. Therefore, they have to pick one of these, and that's it. No choice, no add-ins, and that's nice to be able to lock that if you ever need to. So all in all, you have content control properties, and you have many choices to choose from as to how you work with the drop-down options to give choices, define these choices, lock them down and prepare them so that the values get returned properly to whatever the end result is after the form in Word. Adding a date control. Our form needs one last thing, a way for somebody to tell me when they want to take the training. We have the ability to add this control, and this is on your Developer tab. If you don't have your Developer tab, you might need to activate it and show it. I have my Developer tab. I choose the date picker content control and you again have properties as to what you can do with that control. You give it a title. You also have the ability then to control the format to which they return the value to you. You might prefer a two-year digit, a four-year digit, your call, your choice, maybe you like the year, month, then day. No right or wrong, just make sure it matches the source or the destination of where you plan to use this information later on. You also have the ability to place in the type of calendar it is, the locale, which might determine the arrangement of how the dates are presented. When you're happy with your choices, simply click OK. And we've completed our form, we've added our date protocols, so now at any given time, we can roll out the employee survey, letting people let us know who they are, what they need, and when they need it.